Hey friends, welcome back. So now that you understand the principle of balancing love with wisdom and balancing wisdom with love, I want to get into another finer subtlety, a finer balance, especially again before we proceed with Empowerment 3 and the graduation course. I want you to have a clear picture of what the difference is between will and faith. Because a lot of the questions that I've gotten over the years have something to do with, well, I want to create my reality, or I set certain intentions, or I have a certain vision for myself. But for example, why is it not happening? Or at some point it feels like I'm doing too much and I'm trying too hard and it's no longer really working. On the other hand, I also get a lot of people that are too, so that would be an imbalance towards will, too much will coming too much from the personal self, trying to take care of things that are actually arranged and organically and in perfect timing fall into the slot of your experience due to higher mind and higher self. But if we take too much willpower and try to make things work, we will burn ourselves out and we will not gain much wisdom as to who we truly are and what could be more flowing for us otherwise. So that would be an imbalance, a description of an imbalance of too much will, so to speak. Now, those that have an imbalance towards faith, they appear more as um, victims. They are the spiritual victims, so to speak. Um, you can find them oftentimes in, say, churches or in monasteries or um, a lot of the traditional teachings from the East create this kind of an uh, indoctrination where the attitude is like, oh, everything is up to God or up to Allah or up to Christ. Or um, basically it's the idea that I do not have to participate in my life because everything is predetermined or predestined anyway. So I might as well just accept that whatever happens, happens and that's it. Now that in my eyes is an imbalance towards faith, which isn't true, complete faith, just like will, too much will isn't true, complete will, just like too much love isn't really true love and too much wisdom, extreme imbalance wisdom isn't really wisdom anymore. So in the same way, in order to really gather a lot of free will, to amass a lot of free will and intention power and spiritual, to harness that spiritual free will, we need to actually balance it with faith consistently. And in order to really, really understand what faith is like and the oneness and union we can experience, the samadhi we can experience through faith, we actually need to also participate and gather more free will. So those two go hand in hand, just like love and wisdom need each other. So will, again, would be where I, from my present state of consciousness and sense of identity, intend upon something. Maybe I have an exciting vision. Through perhaps faith, I get an exciting vision and I want to participate in that vision. And so I start doing or creating or visualizing or intending. Now, when this intention, intention is set, that is great because I am participating. I'm vibrationally becoming responsible for my participation and my ability to receive the reality that I just downloaded through me opening up, which we could generally call faith. The lower self opening up to inspiration from the higher self, to guidance from the higher self. That is faith, that is surrender, that is trust. And so as we then gather greater visions because we are raising our frequency and we're opening up through faith, we can raise our frequency even further by participating, but we need to do so in the proper balanced way. And of course, the only way to learn this is to be out of balance sometimes. So that's totally fine too. Don't be too hard on yourself, but do pay attention when you're getting out of balance. So the will part is basically what will describes is wherever you're at from your present sense of I am a self, of I am over here and the world is over there. Now there's many degrees of expansion within this sense of identity. As, as much as you continue your journey, your sense of self will always become more empty, more transparent, more expanded, more clear, more balanced, etc. So free will describes, or will in this sense describes, because it's not always free yet, but will describes that I, from my present state of identity and consciousness, intent 
to create something. In a nutshell, that would be the description of will. I am trying or attempting or desiring to create something and I am taking action, whether it is through intending, visualizing, communicating, relating, or taking physical doership action. I am willing something to happen in a way. I'm participating. But again, if this participation becomes too much or too much coming from the sense of identity and the sense of identity forgets that it needs to continuously open up to what's even bigger than itself, then this will is losing touch with faith or surrender or trust. And the physical mind then tries to take on duties and job descriptions that are never ever going to be able to be fulfilled by the will at that particular level of identity. The brain, for example, is not really designed in any way to take on these tasks that involve parallel timelines, realities, and probabilities of the future. That is one domain that belongs to or that is appropriate to be dealt with from the point of view of the non-physical mind. And so when we take on a vision that is perhaps inspired by our non-physical mind through, say, a faith practice exercise or because we're just in a receptive state of relaxation where the will is not trying too hard to become anything and then it gets all excited about this vision and then it wants to execute it and it wants to do it now and it wants the results to be a certain way now the will becomes insistent and it forgets that it's actually collapsing down into a lesser version of itself it is condensing itself crystallizing itself making itself denser than it needs to be it's more static, less flexible, less intuitive, less open. And so it becomes burdensome to become the doer. Now again, imbalance of faith would be to be so tired of a life trying to do that you would throw it all out of the window and say, and this can be very powerful for a period of time, but it shouldn't be adopted as a philosophy for the rest of your life. In most cases, there's rare exceptions. And that is that, well, it's, it suffers. It, I feel like I'm suffering anytime I try to do anything whatsoever. Anytime I'm trying to intend anything whatsoever. Anytime that I feel that I'm participating in my reality, it immediately turns sour. It turns painful. I feel contracted. So let's just let everything be up to God. Again, temporarily to balance yourself out in that moment, to heal an excess of will. That is exactly what you might need. However, many people then hang their hat on that philosophy and they become subtle spiritual victims and they think that they are not responsible anymore for what they attract into their lives. But nothing is farther from the truth. And so they might attract many sort of like diseases or complications, but they don't really want to investigate anymore. They don't really want to take ownership for that anymore because they've hung their hat on the idea that it's all up to God. And so since it's now all up to God, but we're no longer paying attention or listening to our non-physical minds for guidance and we're no longer participating in our own lives, higher self will then further crystallize catalysts from the mental emotional signals first, which we disregard because we believe it's all up to God and we shouldn't be participating in any way. And then it transfers it into circumstances and our physical bodies. And then still many of us or many of these people that are imbalanced towards faith will go, well, this is God's will. But God's will is that you pay attention and start reparticipating, but balanced in will and faith and not become overly the doer of your life but actually start flowing and start realizing that as you, as you gain those visions, you can immediately set the intention and take action in the most exciting way, yet without any insistence or stubbornness as to the outcome of your intention and the outcome of your action and when it should happen and how it should happen. If you can intend and participate in those exciting visions that you get into those exciting desires that you are in connection with your higher self with and therefore you feel those desires and impulses, if you can participate by simply receiving them, saying yes to them and amplifying them by saying yes, I wish to participate in this reality and I will do what I can to uproot limiting beliefs and negative definitions and transform them to positive definitions about this new reality that I've received in my mind's eye so that I can meet the proper vibrational state so that that reality can then attract itself to me or me to it and that I can then experience that plateau for a while before moving on to something even more expanded and filled with learning and expansion.
So yes, participate, say yes to your dreams, but be careful not to take on ownership from the physical mind's point of view and carry too much about the details of how and when it should manifest. If you can ease off of the how things should come about and when they should come about, again, remember this, if you can ease off of the need and the, inc the incessant desire to control how things will come about or when they will come about, then you are now in a free flowing state where yes, you are in a participatory vibrational state of receptivity yet participation, but you'll always be looking upwards for further clarity and to become more like your higher mind already is. Now you're in the balanced state of will and faith. So I, I hope this was helpful for you and that you will take this with you as you continuously create new waves of expansion and learning and manifestation in your life. And so that this can become accelerated for you and that this can maintain its balance so that the acceleration becomes even more rapid and even more beautiful and even more balanced. Thank you very much. So your homework for this lesson will be to sit down or walk or whatever makes you feel like you're in the flow. And I want you to ask yourself for something exciting. Maybe it's something you've already been aware of for a while, or maybe it's something that you felt underneath the surface, but I want you to ask your higher mind for a vision of something that excites you, that is new for you, that is challenging you a little bit, that is expanding you beyond your comfort zone, and that you need to sort of vibrationally upgrade your participation, your sense of self with, in order to be able to match that frequency. And anything that truly excites you generally is of that nature, where it's slightly out of reach, and it's just sort of a carrot dangling in front of your eyes but its intention is to help you expand your vibration and learn what you need to learn to match the vibration of that which you truly desire so that it can then enter your life and you can take it from there and expand even further with the next most exciting inspiration that you then have access to receiving. So ask for something exciting, think of something exciting, feel how it excites you and see how it ups your frequency and how maybe you have some challenging limiting beliefs that occasionally whoop, contract your frequency a little bit, that make you doubt a little bit, that's okay. But find this nice vision that's sort of in a balanced way, able for you to reach and able for you to be excited about, but not so easy that it's like, oh yeah, of course, this is already the case. Something that expands you a little bit, that challenges you in a positive way in an exciting way. So it's near enough to get excited about. It's close enough in your, within your vibrational realm to get excited about it. When you got something along those lines, it doesn't have to be perfect, just anything that comes to you intuitively will do. And now I want you to pay close attention to how you can participate in this dream, in making this work by receiving it in the appropriate way. And here is what I believe in general to be the appropriate way to receive a new vision of excitement that is slightly above your pay grade, your vibrational pay grade in that moment. And that is to first of all, trust and understand that it will happen, otherwise it wouldn't excite you. Step one, it would not excite me if it was not already within my field of consciousness, if it was not already on the precipice of my higher mind, giving it to my physical mind's experience. So trust that it will happen in perfect timing and see how then you can, you can participate in the following way, which is what do I need to shift within my belief system in order to become a vibrational match to this which I have now envisioned? How would I look? How would I feel? How would I act? What would I believe in that realized state where I have become that version of myself that excites me the most at this time? Imagine it, see it, feel it, be it, and be very, very careful or mindful or aware of when you're trying or attempting to control the details of how and when it should come about. Now, this doesn't mean you cannot attend to details or you cannot have a really detailed oriented brain when it's executing something or when it's acting on its excitement. I have a highly detailed brain in many, many ways. But that's not the same. I can use details and I can pay attention to details and it's part of my joy. Uh, to be perfectionistic in that way is part of my excitement and my skills and my joy and it's part of why some of the things I do work out really well for me. So that's not the problem. Detailed oriented consciousness is not the problem. The problem is when that becomes infused with an insistence of how or when the future outcome should come about. 
So ideally, the appropriate way to receive any new exciting vision is to A, know that it's already yours and trust that and feel that, then see it, feel it, be it. And while you're executing or acting on the exciting steps that seem to correspond with your dream, and while you're going through your vibrational upgrade and investigating the beliefs along the way that don't fit in with that new vision of yourself that you just saw, felt, and are attempting to become or in the process of becoming, to not become insistent upon the details that are future oriented. So you're receiving it now. As long as your physical mind, which is only designed to know the now and to use the past to assert the now, to assess the now, sorry, you will be in a balanced state if you receive this with joy and say yes to that vibration and be up for the challenge and see how you can upgrade your vibration and transform limiting beliefs into abundance and expansive understandings of the universe and how worthy you are and how deserving and how capable you are. And you're saying yes to that inner vibrational journey, knowing that you're becoming a vibrational match to that reality and then it will effortlessly be attracted to you through the law of attraction. So that's the appropriate way to receive a dream. It's not to go out and try to take action to compensate for vibrational alignment. You can never compensate enough for vibrational misalignment. First, you need to align yourself. So that's what you're saying yes to. Yes, I see the vision and I want to become the vibratory receptor that is able to match the frequency of that reality so that it will then effortlessly come my way. And along the way, as a breadcrumb trail, as the breadcrumbs of joy present themselves to me in this moment, I will act on them willingly and diligently and with perseverance, but with a very relaxed perseverance, with a sense of confidence. And the breadcrumb trail of joy, again, there's a lesson that you've had in order to get to this lesson, is the breadcrumb trail of joy, follow that excitement. So the breadcrumb trail of joy never arrives in multiple breadcrumbs. It only ever presents itself here now. Something excites you right now. And this excitement, whatever excites you the most right now is automatically tied into all the other breadcrumbs and all the other facets of your dream that wants to come to you the most efficient, quickest and joyful possible way. Out of all of these space time future probabilities, how your mind is organizing it so perfectly for you, which you could never do using this. So all you have to do is take in what excites you the most right now, believe in it and act on it with the highest integrity with no insistence upon future outcome as to how and when things should come about. This is the appropriate vibrational state of being in the balance of will or participatoriness, of gathering free will, of working on your vibrational upgrading while simultaneously being in trust and faith and receptivity and intuitiveness as to the nudges that you get along the way, acting on your excitement only now, not projecting too far ahead, if at all, into the future, trusting that it is already yours, working on yourself vibrationally, taking it one step at a time, not thinking about outcome at all. Practice this with a particular desire that is exciting to you and challenging to you at this moment and make it happen without doing. Make it happen by participating in a balanced state of intentionality and yet faith and hum humility. Thank you very much and enjoy.